Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing off another one of my Minecraft creations. I made a Minecraft Bedrock. This time though, it's going to be Nimbot. My buddy Nimbot here has never lost a game either. One last thing before I show off my Nimbot creation is thanks for all the support on my shorts channel. Thank you so much. Like, I'm almost at 100 subs. Do not get me there because I don't have a 100 sub special planned. The link will be in the description, but please do not subscribe again. So this is the creation. It's fairly simple. Nimbot's on the right side. Your buns on the left side, and you got this little display here for how much are left. There's 15 lanterns that snake down, top being like the first one you take away, and your goal is to take away the last one. And you take turns going from you to Nimbot to you again. Nimbot's a gentleman, so he has you go first. And as you can see, I took away one from that, then Nimbot would go, and then in this case, he takes away four, and we go back and forth to try to grab the last one. Now on your turn, you can take away one to four, so I just took away four here. Nimbot can only take away one to four also, and the goal is to be the one to grab the last little lantern at the bottom. As you can see, Nimbot wins in this case because he only takes two and he wins. And as you can see, when Nimbot wins, he gets kind of happy and he's all excited because he just won another game. And then you press this little button down here to reset the entire machine, wait till that lantern down there is off, and then you can play again. Now let's say this game, I just want to, you know, start off, let's just take away two, you know? I'll take away two. You see, it takes a little bit of time, but then it shows up on the display. Then we ask Nimbot, what do you want to do, Nimbot? Because I, I want to get this last one here. And also, if you get angry, you can just reset it in the middle of the game because you know you're going to lose. Because let's face it, Nimbot's never lost a game, so why do you expect you're going to beat Nimbot? It's mathematically impossible to beat Nimbot, but in theory, you could beat him with just cheating and breaking the redstone. So other than breaking the redstone, like pushing buttons and stuff, you can't beat him either. I have an anti-cheat on this. Let's say you come up with the idea, what if I just press a button twice? So it should register my move twice, and I go twice instead of having Nimbot go. Now it only registers one of your moves, because it's Nimbot's turn now. But let's say I press a different button also. Well still, it's not going to register because it's Nimbot's turn. Well okay, let's just have Nimbot go twice then. Well you notice, if I just spam the button for Nimbot, it's only going to register one of his moves. Because he knows he doesn't get to go twice, okay? Nimbot's got some brains. You might be like, okay Drake, hold up. Well, you know, pressing 3 and 4 was a little too slow. Press them quicker together. Like, how about this? Okay, how's this work? 3 and 4, pretty close together. You know, it didn't even register yet. But you see, now only the first move registered. I press 1, it doesn't matter. Because it's not my turn, it's Nimbot's turn. You might be saying, Drake, your moves were still too slow. Do it quicker. Okay, how about this? You see how quick that was? No. I don't get to do my turn twice. It's Nimbot's turn, and he wins the game. Okay, let's get into how Nimbot actually works and how he's never lost a game. Alright, so first off, once you see this redstone, you'll see it's all color-coded, so you can hopefully understand the game a little bit better. Okay, let's start off with this right here. This white right here, this is the smallest part so far, is the memory cell. What it does is store the current state of the game. It basically is saying how many lanterns are left. So right now there's 15. This has a signal 15. We can't really read it on Bedrock like you can on Java, but just trust me, this is a signal of 15. And what you might notice it's directly connected to is this blue thing right here. Now, what is this blue thing? This blue thing actually displays what is stored in the memory cell. So it's actually displaying what's left. So if I subtract one, basically the memory cell is going to go down one. And as you can see, the display goes down one. And the way this works is since it's displaying a signal of 14, as you can see, it slithers up here and goes all the way across and slithers up using comparator lines. So it subtracts one every block it's moved. Now you might be wondering, that's cool and all, but like, how does the player interact with this to cause the actual thing to go down? Because these four buns over here, they don't just magically make this actual memory cell just go down every time. You can't just magically do that. There's got to be some redstone involved. Okay, first off, the memory cell needs a two-tick input. So since this bun's like four ticks, basically it's going to run into these one ticks. Basically converting the four tick to a one tick. Sorry for the noise in the background also. But then it uses that one tick and then converts it back into a two tick. By using these repeaters that are at two ticks, it stretches the one tick to a two tick because redstone that's on is quicker than off. Now you might notice these blocks at the end are actually up, so it won't work. It's because it's Nimbot's turn, if you do remember. So if I press this, you see the blocks are down now, so the signal will go through. This is effectively the system basically saying that you can't go twice in a row. So it stops you from going twice in a row, and then it's two ticks, which push the block back up, making it where you can't put in another turn after that. But well, you might be wondering, what happens if I put 3 and 4 in at the same time? Well, as you can see, they all use the exact same line. So this one that's closest has a higher signal, basically meaning that it's going to be the signal that goes through. So if you press 4, now it has 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Basically putting it down to the signal of 4 
So when I put it into this machine, it subtracts four because this comparator is on subtraction. It needs two ticks because there's two comparators, which both take one tick. And the way a comparator on subtraction mode works is if there's a redstone signal running into its side, basically it's going to have that signal that's in it subtracting the signal to its side, and since it's two ticks, then it's going to carry that signal around, and then basically since it's off, it'll just go in an infinite loop. Now you might be wondering, what is this pink? This pink is Nimbot's brain right here. Now how does Nimbot actually know what to do? Because he's not an actual person. So basically, once you press that button, which is his nose, it carries the signal right here, then one ticks the signal, like the other one does, carries it, and then two ticks it. So it's just like how your player would work, where two ticks it so that it updates the memory cell not too quickly and not too slowly. But exactly, what is this block doing here? This block actually shows the current state of the game, because you see, Nimbot can't read this little display we have here. Nimbot is a robot, okay? He can't read it, so we have to make it in terms so that Nimbot understands. So there should be 15 here, but I got rid of the 15th because Nimbot doesn't go first. This block shows the current state of the game for Nimbot so he can understand where we're at and how many are left. So basically, then once you press that button, the redstone signal goes through and only goes through the block that shows the current state of the game so that Nimbot knows what to do because obviously, as I've said, this display is a little too small for him to read and he actually cannot read. I know, crazy, he's illiterate. The display is only there for the, us humans to understand how many are left and it's based off the memory cell. So... Nimbot can neither read the memory cell, nor what we can, so we have this red decoder here so that he can read it. And so as you can see, it has a piston pushed up to show the current state of the game from the memory cell so that Nimbot understands it. So for example, with this current state of the game, basically the redstone signal would run through here, and then with this block here, would carry the signal through that to this torch line. Now this torch line would turn that off, turning this one up here on, and then it's a little zigzagged, but as you can tell, it would turn this on, and then if you look from the side view, it turns this one off, then on, then off, then on, then off, then on. And you might be wondering, Drake, why in the world are you doing this? Like, this seems stupid to do. Well, there's actually a reason. Since there's four inputs for the player, there's four layers of this for four inputs for Nimbot. With the bottom one being four, then three, then two, then the top one being one. Now you might be wondering, why is there these little parts that, like, stick out to connect them and stuff, and they're not on all the layers? Well, if you notice... Since I've said that, if it's at this current state of the game, then it will send a signal down that line. And you might see, like, this little pyramid thing. And you might be wondering, Drake, why is there, like, this pyramid shape, and then a gap in between, then a pyramid shape, then a gap in between? Since Nimbot can only make one move per turn, basically, what it's doing is it's only going to do one move. But this has got an algorithm here so that he always wins. So, like, if I press 1, it's not going to do anything because it's not his turn. Basically, it's going to carry this signal when he goes. And then it's only going to go straight up this line right here. And you'll notice there's this block above me. And that would be the move that he would make in that scenario with that many things left. So in this scenario, since I ran into the bottom one out of all the four layers, it would be that he'd make the move four on his turn. So he'd take away four from the total. And as you can see, this repeater makes it 15, which goes in this comparator making it 15. And it's a little confusing, but then this is 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4... And then it would basically subtract 4 from the total here. Okay, let's get into the algorithm for how Nimbot's brain works so that he actually never loses this game. Imagine these 15 blocks are just like the lanterns, okay? You're trying to get the diamond. These green is the possible moves you can make on your turn. Now, if Nimbot is red, the possible moves he can make on his turn based on what you make could be this. Because if you select 1, he could select 1. If you selected 4, he could select 4. And obviously, using this there, you could do the same thing for your turn on the next turn. But here's the thing, that's way too complicated, okay? I can't make a Nimbot that smart. So there's actually a simpler algorithm to understand this better. So instead of imagining 15 all together, let's imagine three groups of five, because that basically makes up 15. Now we're going to make green your moves and red Nimbot's moves still. So on the first turn, you can only do this, which is one less than the grouping of five. Now if we think of the end of each as the win, right? Instead of the diamond after the 15 to be the win, Nimbot thinks of the end of every five groupings as a win. So... Thinking of that theory, you can never get a win on your first turn, because if you did four, you'll always be short by one. And Nimbot wants to win the grouping, so what he's going to do, basically on your move, if you selected four, he'll do one, and instead of going all the way across like this, he just wants to win the one point. So basically, if you selected one, he'll do four, kind of like this. And to show that this works, let's say that on your turn, you grab two, because that's in the green area, then he'll just grab three, and he'll win the grouping. Okay, now let's say that he won the grouping, okay? Basically, if he won the grouping, then we were going to end up in the exact same scenario on the next thing. So he takes diamond, basically, 
then you're going to end up in the exact same scenario again for the little five grouping. You can't take the diamond again. So then he gets to go. And you'll notice that your moves are the same and his moves are the same. Now basically, depending on whatever you grab, so let's say I did grab four this turn. Well then Nimbot's just going to grab one. He won this grouping. And it's going to put us in the exact same scenario for the last grouping. And he'll win the game completely. And as you can see, if he won the grouping completely, you know, the exact same scenarios align. And you can see it's the exact same thing. It's like literally the same structure I'm building over and over again. And that's just what he's doing. And he'll always win because like, let's say you grab one. Then he'll just grab four to win the grouping because he can grab up to four on his turn. And then when you go to the next scenario, you can take one to four again. Let's say you grab two instead of one. Then he grabs three and he wins the grouping. Okay, when you get to the third and final scenario, what most people know is this is the last one. This is how you win the game. Let's say you grabbed four on your turn. If you grab four, he grabs one and wins the grouping and wins the entire game. To better visualize this, what I've done is made every one of your possible moves and his possible moves using this algorithm. And you'll notice, look at this, the pyramid shape. Look, pyramid shape, pyramid shape. There's three pyramid shapes. If we go back here with his possible moves, you'll see three pyramid shapes. With green being your possible move and red being his possible move, you'll notice at the start of each grouping, it'll always be you. At the end of each grouping, it'll always be him. So he will never let you win. And part of the anti-cheat is, you matter how I said at the start of each grouping, it'll always be you no matter what. You look right here, this is the start of a grouping. He doesn't have a possible move he would make if it was at that scenario, because he knows he'll never be at that scenario. So then if you try to make him go twice in a row, he's not going to go because he wouldn't ever be in that situation to lose the game. Another anti-cheat I have for this game is if you try to make him go twice in a row, this one tick right here actually also just pushes the block up because it's a normal piston, meaning the only time for him to actually go again would just be for you to use your turn. And you might say, well, if he's never going to get in that scenario in the first place. Well, it takes a few ticks for the thing to actually go around, and it takes like three ticks for the button. So the button would already be able to press it twice, and it would have the input twice before it updates. And the comparator line I looked at, that would just be, on your turn, it'll update it, so then it'll push the block back down. Now, the last thing there is, is this reset button right here. Now, the reset's actually fairly simple. Now, there's only two parts you need to update for the reset to actually happen. Now, you'll see that these two lines because of that. Now, this repeater runs into the memory cell, because let's say you complete the game and it's at zero. Then it's going to use a repeater to put it back up to 15. Which, if we remember, there's 15 lights, so then it puts it back at its max lights. Now, this other side right here just runs a signal across this line right here. That you'll notice on Nimbot, when he does his turn, it runs a signal across that makes it where you're allowed to do your turn. What this does is it basically does the exact same thing. It allows you to do your turn. Because you always start the game off and Nimbot always goes second, so you have to be able to do your turn to start the game. So it just resets that. So that's my showcase and explanation on Nimbot. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you have it and you like the content I make, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Thanks, and see you guys in my next video.